Hi, I'm Skater Bob here, and uh, we're at Nicholas Circle in Hillsborough County, and we come to this pump station because we've noticed that the efficiency calculations are not working properly. Uh, so what I'm, we're going to go through today are the three main steps to uh, verify that the connections are proper uh, on the multi-smart and in the control system so that the efficiency calculations are working properly. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, uh, take a look at the multi-smart first to show you the symptoms, uh, the first indication that it's not working properly. So we're going to go ahead and hit info and then the next thing you do you go to power and efficiency and then after that you can take a look at the statistics and you will notice that there are all lines, dotted lines indicating that no efficiency calculations were performed. The, also, the other th indication is that if a pump is running you'll notice that there are no power factor readings. Now that is your main key. You have to remember power factor readings are only displayed when a pump is running. It's not displayed if a pump is off. So if I were to turn a pump on right now and take a look you would also notice that there would be zeros in the power factor. Also note that you will get readings for KVA or VA or apparent power, since that's a, that is a pure calculation of volts times amps. KW calculations will not appear because KW is based upon the volts times amps times the power factor. So since the power factor is not available, you will not get any KW readings as well because KW relies upon real power, which is based upon the power factor correction. So let's go inside the panel and take a look at what we have to do. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to keep the main power on and I want to caution you that this technically could be an arc flash environment. But uh, what we're going to do is we're going to do a very simple test. For those of you who are concerned about arc flash, you would want to put in your protective clothing at this point. Open up the dead front. and. As I mentioned earlier, there are three tests we have to perform. The first test is making sure that the terminations on phase A, B, and C are in exactly the same sequence as the terminations on your main pump breaker, A, B, and C. That's both for pump one, in this case also for pump two, phase A, B, and C. So in order to do that, we're going to go ahead and get a Wiggins tester. We are in an energized panel and we're going to be testing voltages at 480 volts. There are several devices we could be using. One device is a uh, traditional electronic voltometer. Uh, this will do the job, but there is one specific thing you've got to be careful of. And that is if you perhaps put it on the wrong setting, the wrong selector setting. For example, if I put this on resistance, or if I put this on continuity check, accidentally, and if I went ahead and put it across, 200, across two phases at 480 volts, this would literally blow up in my hand. It would be a source, it would cause arc flash and I'd be going to the hospital right now. So unless you absolutely are confident and you know exactly what settings you're on, I do not recommend doing this test with this device. Instead, we're going to be doing, using a Wiggins tester, or Wiggy, been around for years. This device will, is designed to only look at voltages. There are no settings on it. Uh, it's heavier insulation, and it's a much safer device to perform this test. And what we're going to do is we're going to make sure that phase A on the upper left hand corner of the multi-smart is identical to phase A on the breaker is on for pump one and also is identical to phase A for pump two breaker. So to do this we take one of the leads and we put the lead on the phase A input of the multi-smart. The other lead is going to go 
onto phase A of pump number one circuit breaker. And I am not reading a voltage. If I'm not reading a voltage, that means that they're both at the same potential. They're both on the same phase. For example, if I went to phase A on the multi-smart and then I went to phase B, I'm reading 480 volts. Well, that makes sense because I'm reading across two legs. That's a good test to confirm everything is working properly. And again, if I went to phase A on the multi-smart and I went to phase C on the breaker, I'm also reading 480 volts. So by the fact that I go from phase A in the breaker to phase A in the multi-smart, I do not get a voltage, confirms that these are wired properly. So we're going to go ahead and do the same test for phase B. At the multi-smart, phase B in the breaker, no voltage. And then finally, phase C on the multi-smart, and just by the odds, phase C on the breaker, you're, not, you're going to also no voltage. What that does is it confirms that the wiring on the breaker is exactly in the same sequence as the wiring input into the multi-smart. If you do not have identical wiring, then you have to switch the legs either at the multi-smart or at the breaker in order to get them in the same sequence. Make sure you power down to do that operation, power it back up and test again. You also will also do the same test for pump two and I'll do that and just to make sure that pump two is wired in the same way. Now finally, just because the line side of the breaker is in sequence, it does not mean that the CTs are also in the sequence. So what you do then is you physically look on the load side of the breaker and make sure the load side wire is going to the CT, for, in this case pump one, is going through the CT for phase A. The middle phase on the breaker is going through the CT for phase B and phase C on the breaker is going through the C phase CT for pump one. Do the same thing for pump two. Now what we've established that the CTs are sensing the current for phase A, B, and C in identical sequence to phase A, B, and C at the multi-smart. Okay, now we're going to go to test number two. Okay, now we're going to do test number two, and that is to make sure that CT for phase A, and this is for pump one, the wires leaving or connected to the CT on phase one, in fact, is terminated at the multi-smart for phase A, and then also the CT for phase B is terminated in the second set of inputs for phase B and then phase C is for the third point. The best way to do this is merely to follow the wire. So in this case I'm going to go ahead and tug on the white wire and follow the white wire all the way through to verify that in fact it goes to phase A. Then I'll follow the wire on the bottom, follow it around and in fact it goes to the same CT. The goal is is that the black and white wires are matched on the same CT and it's sequenced across pump 1 A, B and C, pump 2 A, B and C. So they're matched and they're matched up and down on the same terminal. Okay, that completes test number two. Okay, we're going to do the third test now, and that is confirming that there are no open uh, connections in the CTs. Uh, so to do this, we're going to go ahead and power off the station. Uh, we turn the main power off the station so everything is dead in here. And we're going to go ahead and test for any open or breaks. Now you'll notice in this panel here they use butt splice connectors on the CT leads. It's very possible that these butt splice connectors could be crimped to insulation and not to uh, copper to copper. We've seen that in the past. 
So if that were true, we would be not getting a true continuity reading. I want to caution you about CTs. If current were flo to flow through a CT and either one of the terminals were open, the electromotive force would build up in the CT and it would explode. So be very, very careful. Make sure your power is off while doing this test because if a pump did go on and you had an open conductor from a CT, the voltage would build up in the CT and it would literally explode and you would be going on your way to the hospital. Power is off. Let's take a look at the procedure here. This procedure is pretty straightforward. We're going to take off the terminals from the CTs out of the Multismart and we're going to read 200 ohms on our multimeter. Remember the power is off. So we read the resistance across the white and the black wire for each CT. I'm getting 0.3 ohms across each one of the input wires, black to white per CT. This confirms that there are no opens and the wiring is intact to the CTs. Actually, it also confirms if you follow, and you're going to be following the sequence, sequence black to white, it also reconfirms that the wiring is correct in each one of the CTs, that each white on top is associated with the correct black on the bottom. So I've finished that whole test and everything is fine. So let's go ahead and this is the completion of test number three. Okay, before you do test four, at this point, it might be a good idea to go back. Maybe you've made a change and you've remedied a cause. So you go back to your main panel, turn your power back on, and go take a look at your efficiency and see if you're getting, uh, start your pumps and see if you get a uh, kilowatt hour reading, see if you get a power factor reading. If you don't, then you still have to go to step four and that is to change the polarity of the CTs. So we're going to go ahead and do that. Uh, power is off. We're going to go back into the Multismart one more time. Uh, mains off. Breakers doesn't count. I'll go ahead and turn them off anyway. Now, what this means is that the polarity of the CTs are backwards, or could be backwards. Um, if the polarity is backwards, voltage is rising, but current is dropping. So they can't, the calculation cancels itself out, and you're going to get zeros. So what we want to do is we want to have, as voltage is rising, we want to have current rising. So there's two things you can do. Number one, you can take your CTs and you can flip them over and put them back. Well, this is going to be rather difficult here. But if you can't flip over your CTs, and you have to flip all three together, um, then you go ahead and you can change the wiring on the Multismart. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and one by one take off the white wire on top and exchange it with the black wire on the bottom on a phase per phase basis. So this is going to take some time, but I will go ahead and change them all so the whites are on the bottom, blacks are on top, and then we'll go back and we'll retest again. So I'll come back to you in a minute. Okay, we're in the middle of test number four. And what I've just completed is I've reversed the polarity of the inputs. The white wires were on top, now they're on the bottom, and similar the blacks are on top. I made extra care to keep each pair matched so that I wouldn't change the existing sequence because we already confirmed the sequence was correct. So what we want to do now is go ahead and test to make sure that hopefully the power factor readings are correct and it will also now calculate efficiencies. So what you want to do is turn the power on, turn the two pump powers on. Let's go ahead and uh, our pump's just started. That's good. Immediately, we're going to go to info, 
power and efficiency calculations. And you'll notice right now that our power factor for pump one is 0.64. Uh, hopefully that'll improve. It might not be correct the first run. And we're now getting KVA calculations and we're also getting power, KW, 10.7 is incrementing. So it's totalizing the total power being used. So in fact, test number four did in fact correct the problem. It was a polarity problem on the CTs, which now allowed us to um, go ahead and get power factor calculations. So in summary, uh, there are four tests we went through and go through each test sequentially, make sure that their correction is correct. Go back and run your pumps. Remember, you can only see power factor values when the pump is running. So that's it for now. Escape Bob saying so long and see you next time.